On the docket tonight, a trial coming up right here on Court TV uh, very, very soon involving a man who was um, seeing someone outside of his relationship and had a baby with this woman and is now accused of murdering her and their child. Ted Rollins has more. We are truly saddened by this horrific tragedy. Our heartfelt condolences go out to the victims, family and friends. Customs more protection is taking this allegation very seriously. On Monday morning, April 9th, 2018, Griselda Hernandez and her 20-month-old son went to a Laredo, Texas park to meet with the child's father, Ronald Anthony Bargosa Vilas. Hernandez was 27 years old, a single mother who was putting herself through nursing school. She wanted to meet with Burgos Aviles to ask him to help pay for daycare for their son, Dominic. According to court documents, Burgos was so furious that Hernandez would ask for child support because he was trying to keep his relationship with Hernandez and the birth of their son a secret from the woman he was living with when he killed Griselda and Dominic. The Webb County District Attorney told local station KRGV that Burgos was working his shift as a Border Patrol agent when he killed Griselda and Dominic. The information we have is that he clocked in that morning at 6 a.m. and that uh, we believe the murder occurred somewhere between 9.55 a.m. and 10. The bodies of Griselda Hernandez and her son, Dominic, were found in a wooded, secluded area near the Rio Grande. They both had been stabbed multiple times. Burgos Aviles was considered the main suspect from the beginning. According to investigators, he made the 911 call asking for an ambulance. He became the primary person of interest in the investigation early, uh, um, the first few minutes of the case or hours of the case. Burgos Aviles is facing two counts of capital murder. The Webb County District Attorney is asking for the death penalty if Burgos is convicted, telling KRGV that it's because of how he allegedly used his background in law enforcement to commit the crimes. He used uh, his uniform and his specialized skill to carry out the crime, uh, decide when, where, how he was going to do the crime, how he tried to cover up the crime. This is kind of sick also. Uh, unfortunately, tonight we have a slew of these stories. Let's bring back in our think tank, Eklund Mercy, Kirk Nurmi, Eric Fattis with us. Eric, um, this sort of combines the first two stories we were talking about, right? You got someone now with the law enforcement background using that, and in this case, the allegation to kill his own child and the mother of his own child. Um, prosecutor here looking for the death penalty. Yeah, you know, um, not surprised they're seeking the death penalty in Texas as opposed to Ohio, where it's still an open question. Um, but yeah, here, I mean, I think a thread that runs through this is a position of trust, right? You know, you know, uh, we, we want we want to be able to trust law enforcement um, and 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 you know rely on them and, and be, feel safe around them. And here, the defendant allegedly used that background, used that training, that specialized knowledge in order to carry out this gruesome murder uh, of the mother of his child and of his child. And then, and um, and so I think that that position of trust piece is the part that really, you know, cuts against the moral fabric of, of our society and, and, and why people are so up in arms about these cases. Eklund Mercy, this is not a case of, of mental illness. No, I, I think it's a case of the idea that law enforcement as is, is, is inherently good is, is, a falsity that we think that just because you don a uniform, you are automatically good people and you are not capable of terrible crimes and felonies, that has been like bursted out the window. And we constantly see it, like consistently. Um, we see people being um, kind of duped or, you know, catfish into these relationships with these people in law enforcement only to be murdered or sexually assaulted or, uh, you know, a, a slew of other things. So the idea that law enforcement on his face, you, you don a uniform and you are good, that, that has gone out the window. I think that they have to earn it and it's going to be a long, it's going to be a long and arduous process. Kirk, motive will 
will play, a, I think, a huge role in this case and in, in prosecutors trying to prove it because uh, you don't have to prove motive. But in this, that's, I mean, that's what this case is about. It's about uh, why on earth would you do this? And, and the answer seems pretty obvious from uh, the evidence that we've seen so far. Well, you know, Vinny, it's not just what the case is about in terms of guilt or innocence, it's going to be, but it's going to be what the case is going to be about when we talk about the imposition of that ultimate penalty. Why, right? That's what the jurors are going to want to know. Why did this young law enforcement officer, or the, the defense probably characterized that he snapped, that he lost his school, that he's otherwise had it, lived an exemplary life. And I think we're going to see that in the trial as a foundation towards the sentencing phase in an effort to spare their client's life. Because ultimately, that's what this case is going to be about when the death penalty is pursued. Guilt is pretty much going to be presumed, and those, those attorneys are going to be focused on the circumstances of the offense in hopes that that is what will motivate a jury to spare his life. And Eric, it seems the DA pretty upset with the use of the training and experience as a member of law enforcement um, to use it to attempt to get away with this uh, case. Does that tell you anything about how you think this trial is going to go? Because uh, he has some inside knowledge as to how the system works to a certain extent. Uh, do you think there may be some obstacles for prosecutors here? You know, I'll be interested to see kind of what their approach, and, and Eglin hit a, it, it's a nail on the head. You know, I think America is kind of waking up. We, we have this fantasy, that this illusion that law enforcement is always good. And don't get me wrong, that there are some uh, who are absolutely great, um, but he, but there are some who are not. And, and when those folks violate the public trust, they need to be held accountable in a firm and, and direct way. And I hope that that's what the prosecutor pursues here, um, assuming that this gentleman is guilty. Right, but when you say some are good and some are bad, it's not like we're not talking 50 50 flipping a coin here, Eklund. We're not talking about that. We're talking about there are a few that are really bad, and there's a whole bunch that are super brave keeping us safe, Eklund. I'm taking it as a subjective, one by one, until um, besides the passing of time, if we can show what law enforcement has done to um, weed out these bad apples, to train people to understand what reasonable suspicion and probable cause is. If the only thing we got is the passing of time and more money, I think it's a subjective basis, one by one. You prove that you are good in that uniform, one by one. Each man, each woman by themselves. All right. Don't go anywhere, folks. Fasten your seatbelts. Up next. In tonight's Tank Takes, a man accused of shoplifting a sex toy at Target is caught on body cam as the sex toy falls to the ground. And tonight we're asking, on which aisle do they sell those? There was pounding on the door. Bang, bang, bang. He said that we'd seen his face and there was no way that he could ever let us go. I survived because I'm a born fighter. I survived. Next on Court TV. There's no way this offense would have been committed by Morgan Leopard without Toby Lowry. But Toby could have committed this offense without her. He deserved what he got. Accomplice to Murder with Fanny Politan. All new episodes, Sunday night, 8, 7 central, only on Court TV. Welcome back. Time for tonight's Tank Takes, where we take a look at the world of crime and justice. Some of the stories that are off the beaten path just a little bit. Um, still with us, our think tank, Eklund Mercy, Kirk Nurmi, Eric Faddis. Are you ready? Let's ready. All right, first story. This one uh, we are calling Wave Runner, taking place down in the, uh, down in the Gulf, uh, down in the panhandle of the Gulf. A 38-year-old man in, in, from Florida is out in the water on his boogie board. Usually that's okay, but it was a double red flag situation. So police were calling him to get out. And then when he finally did get out, they tried to arrest him and he ends up in a big foot chase going through the dunes and down he goes. So my question to you, Kirk Nurmi, did this man, did he sand a chance or was he doomed from the beginning? <clears throat> Well, this shows you, Vinny, that stupid can run faster than he does because he went from a 
little uh, citation of 500 bucks to uh, resisting arrest and some more charges. So, yeah, I mean, this is this is pretty pretty uh, stupid behavior, no doubt about it. Double red flags down there, Eric. And when I'm down there, I know that means you can't go in the water. He refused to get out. What are your thoughts? You know, as one of the videographers put it, he was just trying to shred some gnar. You know, what's wrong with that? How paternalistic to force him out of the ocean. I'm not with the video. All right, let's get to our next one. This is, uh, we're calling Backpack Baby. Uh, again, we just happen to be in Florida. I don't know. Sometimes these stories happen in Florida. Um, a woman was arrested on a bicycle for having uh, possession of drugs in her backpack along with a baby raccoon. Um, take a look. I think we have a um, picture. There's the little baby raccoon in the backpack, apparently wearing a mask also, by the way. Uh, my question, was this baby raccoon a victim or an accomplice. And speaking of accomplice, folks, don't forget to watch my brand new show every Sunday night, Accomplice to Murder with Vinnie Politan. All new episodes every Sunday, 8 o'clock Eastern, right here on your front row seat to justice. Eklund Mercy, what'd you think about the raccoon? Victim or accomplice? Oh, oh drugs are bad. And it, you could tell, just drugs are bad. She had drugs and a raccoon. Drugs are bad. She needs help. That's sad. That's a sad. That's sad. That's a sad scenario. That's a sad scenario. Kirk, you have a um, an interesting look on your face right now. What's on your mind? <laughs> well, well, that segue of yours is so slick, Vinny. I'm trying to catch my breath. But listen, you know what? I. I I've had clients tell me when, when I was a baby public defender that, that when they were found with drugs in their pocket that they borrowed those pants, they had no idea the drug was in there, you know, expecting me to believe it. So I have no doubt that somewhere this woman is telling her public defender that the raccoon came in with the drugs. She had no idea they are there, and this raccoon has a bad habit. So maybe we'll see Cocaine Raccoon coming to a theater near you, Vinny. Cocaine Raccoon coming this summer to a theater near you. Go ahead, Eric. I'll give you the last word on this one. I was just saying, some of those raccoons like to party. Who knows? You know, we'll have to see. <laughs> All right, let's get to our final story tonight. Uh, I was trying to uh, give this as little time as possible. Uh, the sex toy bandit, um, a, a shoplifter at Target, apparently shoplifting sex toys. Then the toy falls out as he's being arrested. Let's take a look. Step out of the truck. Out of the truck. Oh. Back up. Back up. Back up. Have a seat. Do you have anything on you? No. Please. Go against the car. Nope. Go against the car. There, there, did you see the little blurry spot? That was the uh, sex. I think it was pink, by the way. Anyhow, um, so Eric Fattis, I've got to ask you sex toy at, 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 at Target. Um, which aisle do you find those? <laughs> a great question. And I want to know what else was in his basket. You know, was there, was there a GoPro, some produce? Who knows? But a uh, bizarre story out, out of Florida here. All right. I'll give you the final word, Kirk. Uh, Eklund, you don't have to answer this one. Go ahead, Kirk. They need to legalize marijuana in Florida because all these stories came from Florida. And clearly people in Florida need to chill out, Vinny. All right. Thank you, everyone. Eklund Mercy, Kirk Dermy, Eric Faddis. Appreciate uh, you coming on the show tonight. We'll see you again really, really soon. All right, folks. Before we go tonight, we have a missing child. So please take a close look at the screen. This is Devin Austin. Devin's only 15 years old, missing from Columbia, South Carolina, down there near the low country. Um, if, if you see Devin, here's what you need to do. Pick up the phone, make a call. 1-800-THE-LOST, 911, or you can call the Richland County Sheriff's Office. The phone number is on the screen for you. Uh, take a close look. Let's see if we can get Devin to a safe place tonight. I'm Vinny Politan. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great night, and as always, please don't forget to hug the kids.